Hello, good afternoon everybody and welcome to the j Pep Talk Show and this is my 23rd episode on the j Pep Talk Show. Um, I haven't done it for uh, for the last two weeks. I've been pretty busy uh, on everything else um, going along and everything. I just had to settle for business and uh, take care of everything and then uh, clean uh, and whatever and then do whatever was best for business and, uh, and take care of most of the things. Well, uh, in the past two weeks, I haven't done my uh, pep talk show. And uh, first, we can start off with Formula One in the Canadian Grand Prix and also the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Congratulations, Max Verstappen, for winning both of those races. Uh, and they're in the East. We've got a good commanding lead so far uh, in the Formula One uh, in real life um, in this 22 uh, season. And he's doing a pretty good job. In the next couple of weeks, he'll be going to the French Grand Prix at the Le Casquet Circuit in Paul Richard. And also, um, a week before that will be the start of the, the biggest uh, cycling race, the bicycle uh, race, uh, the Tour de France. Now, will be coming out uh, beginning of uh, June uh, and throughout that uh, whole month of June will be uh, the Tour de the whole month of July, actually, it will be the Tour de France. And we're almost towards the end of July. This is the first day of summer, July uh, 21st, uh, so summer is going to be a sizzling hot season. And I decided to do my pep talk show under my um, under my shade and everything because it is so hot outside. It is about 95 degrees uh, out here. So I'm going to make it uh, short and simple. And uh, the camera's looking a little shaky right now because I have the uh, I have my uh, little mini tripod a, a little bit uh, upwards, so that way you could get a good glimpse of me while I'm doing my show. Um, and I'm finally done with Formula One 2021. If you missed my uh, final episode of the Formula One 2021 game, you can check it out on the subscription button or on my live streaming on twitch.tv slash speedjapinator3 and youtube.com slash speedjapinator3, which I'll film in my pep talk show um, right now after I'm done. And then the NASCAR news, and finally, the Mexican driver, Daniel Suarez, finally gets his first ever career win at Sonoma. He did a magnificent job to, uh, a week and a half ago uh, winning there. He denominated that race. He could have won two races uh, this season. That's the third win for that uh, track house racing team. And it looks like Justin Marks and uh, Pitbull are really getting it together uh, with the, uh, and that could be the new Furniture Row racing uh, like it was in the past. But the track house racing is finally uh, getting something done. Now, in a couple of days, uh, the NASCAR is going to have their smart delivery back, so I will be returning to uh, NASCAR 21 Gaming to finish the final 11 races. <sighs> and hopefully they'll make some fixes and adjustments out of it, and, uh, and if they do, in the last final 11 races, just like they do with the Heat Games, um, then we'll be able to uh, re-emerge and resurgence. And, you know, my next episode will be episode number 26 at the Daytona International Speedway. It will be on the race now mode as I get ready for career mode for the final uh, 10 races of the NASCAR uh, Cup Series uh, schedule. So I'll be finishing it off uh, for, for the last uh, 11 episodes and then I'll take a break from that for a couple of months until NASCAR 22 comes out with their season expansion pack with their new gen cars for next season and hopefully we'll have Auto Club Speedway and Worldwide Technology Raceway added on into the season expansion pack uh, when that comes out in September. And we're still making a decision on going to World Superbike or Formula One Manager 22 that will be coming out in August and then next week Formula One 22 game comes out. I haven't played it yet but I will be catching on to uh, when, when this game gets released next week I'll start a small intro part one and then another intro, um, in case you missed it on my uh, final episode of my 2021 game, I did announce about that. Now, the big announcement is, for next week, when I start the Formula 1 22 game in my sixth year, I may be making changes of changing my Speed Japanator 3 stage name, and maybe naming it Speed Japanator 3 3.0. And just like you see on the uh, Wrestling NXT 2.0, I'm decided to make a, a little bit of a simological simil gimmick uh, to make it 3.0 if I decide to do that, uh, starting with the uh, Formula 1 22 game for, for next week. I was going to do the MotoGP episode number uh, 24 for the Argentina uh, Grand Prix, but I'll do that tomorrow afternoon because I'm running out of time because i got to get to... Uh, exercising and then do bowling uh, tonight so I have to do as business as usual uh, and I don't want to get caught up with, with anything uh, once I do it 
Cool. And then also um, NXT tonight. Uh, well, let's hope that Toxic Attraction get their re revenge on uh, Roxana Perez and Cora Jade. But there is some kind of a question mark about Indy Hartwell. I know sometimes you cannot trust her very, very well because I know that I know Roxana and Cora are having a little bit of a uh, strange talk on Indy, and I think Indy is not liking that. But I think she's finding out right now that they're not really the best of uh, friends. I think the, she'll be on for them for a short time, but I think there could be a betrayal going on pretty uh, soon or maybe earlier rather than later if this uh, continues on because I'm thinking maybe her good friend Candice LeRae might be coming back. But we don't know when uh, she'll be coming back as planned or anything, but, uh, but I just have a bad feeling right now there could be a stab in the back. Uh, if Andy Harwell uh, could stab Roxana Perez and Cor Cora Jade in the back, but it might be a possibility, I don't know, but we'll have to see at Great American Bash if Roxana Perez is going to pull it off over Mandy Rose, but uh, but I still like the, that my alliance group, a Toxic Attraction, that they have made a big, big uh, spectacular year during the past nine months, ever since I joined in with them uh, for for the past uh, nine months or so and, and they have all done a great job and and we have the wwe draft coming up in the next three months and then there's a possibility they'll be going to the main roster but all those other all those other ones in raw and smackdown you better watch your back because they are coming like ronda and then also bianca belair and i feel so bad that Rhea didn't want to uh, compete i think she's waiting until SummerSlam to try to maybe go against Bianca Belair uh, for the title. And I think R Ripley might pull it off uh, at SummerSlam uh, when they go there. I think it's at Nissan Stadium at uh, in Tennessee. They'll still have it at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. And also this weekend, the first broadcast on NBC will be having it in Lebanon, uh, Tennessee at the Nashville Super Speedway. And uh, hopefully it will be a good race. They said they're gonna have provide a little bit of a passing opportunity you know I've already raced there on the virtual racing and I did win at Nashville Super Speedway you can see that in my episode on NASCAR 21 uh, and I did okay over there I only had about two spin outs there two mistakes but then the rest of the way I did pretty well but it, even though motorsports games I know it still sucks and I know they're still having uh, problems and and everything else but um, let's hope this uh, last patch uh, will do good and I'm afraid I think it's going to be the last patch for NASCAR 21 before the season expansion pack comes uh, in September on NASCAR 22 game. And also MotoGP news, um, well Fabio is having a commanding season again and he could be on his way of getting his third MotoGP World Championship as they reach the halfway point of the uh, MotoGP season. They've already completed 10 races and then the next one will be the halfway mark at the Circuit of Sen at the uh, Dutchland Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah, they race at the Circuit of Sand. The, you know, Circuit Sandoval is where Formula One races. That's where, where they're going to go. And the truck race uh, last weekend, Haley Deegan did okay. She did a good job over there. And she even won a, a heat in the uh, qualification heat round. And she is a good dirt track racer, and she always has. But she still dramatically needs to improve. I know she's being patient out there in the pavement uh, races. She does good in the dirt, but she has to do dramatically well in the uh, pavement races. If she wants to get her opportunity to go to the Xfinity Series well, with a good team, but I hope she's not uh, rushing it too much. And and please, Haley, please do not be like Danica, okay? And uh, I'm warning you, I don't want you to be another busty driver uh, out there like her. Because you, you got the guts, you got the confidence, and you got everything going. And you know, the NHRA has been absolutely spectacular with the women. Uh, in NHRA, you know, I mean, Brittany Force is really uh, killing it this season. And then also in Pro Stock, how about Erica Anders? She's really killing it this season, too. So there's some uh, really toxic going on with uh, with those two in two different uh, scenarios, like in Top View. If many of you don't watch NHRA, you know, the women's over there are doing uh, dramatically very well. Brittany Force is uh, on top of the line with uh, Mike Salala. See, he has been the underdog this season with that uh, that Skaggs racing team moving from pro stock motorcycle to the top rank uh, top fuel and he's having a, an awesome season he has a great family you know uh, 
and, and two great, uh, two beautiful daughters uh, she's got. You know, Johanna, you know, uh, I think she's still racing the Pro Stock uh, motorcycle, but I know she's not having a good season. She's pretty much uh, of a back marker on Pro Stock motorcycle, but maybe in the future she'll maybe try to be a little bit of a contention. But Eric, Karen Stouffer's having a good year in the Pro Stock motorcycle. Uh, I saw her, she's second in points, so she's having a, uh, a comeback season. And no question about that. And she's doing pretty well. Well, for me, uh, well, Formula One 22 is going to be a great game. They said it's already uh, it's already made its uh, top marks uh, because people have been doing the gameplay. You know, I don't have a PC yet. I'm, I'm planning on getting one possibly maybe in December. Hopefully if I could save up for it and everything and then win some prizes and so far if I do well in the bowling tournaments and, and all that. And then maybe I'll try to get an opportunity to get a gaming PC. And I'm really trying to grow my channel. It's growing slightly and uh, I'm taking my patience and reaching my goal to uh, a thousand subscribers so my channel would be monetized and then I'll move on to, to premium to see if anybody can try to pay for my channels and my shows and everything in it. And we're expanding, I'm booming, and then we'll try some other games coming up and then also especially Forza Motorsports coming up in March of 2023. I will be doing a few episodes on it. I'll mostly do episodes on Forza Motorsports on Twitch.tv only. And then just do a few, uh, if there's any uh, season sessions. Uh, and if they do have a NASCAR uh, on there, uh, that'll be great. And I think it's going to work uh, far much, uh, tw twice as better uh, than it did uh, with, uh, with Motorsports Gaming. But only time will, will tell. But mostly they just have sports cars. They just showed it mostly, all the past sports cars. Uh, from WEC and then all the IMSA years. Uh, I saw the Corvette there, I saw the Porsche, all the, all the ones from the past were about, that were three to six years old. And then they also have the past DPI cars. There will be possibly maybe upgrades on Forza Motorsports because I really want to drive those hyper cars. If they succeedingly do well, like Daytona, Sebring, and La Ma. And I know they'll have those tracks right onto the game. And then I saw Royal Atlanta, they did have that in Brasseling, Georgia. That's where they do the Petit Le Mans. I may have to do those endurance races in parts, but uh, we'll see uh, what is going to be in store. Because I may have to do it maybe two or three hours or, or so. Because that will only be my time limit and everything. Because if I do it too long, it would get a little bit too boring. But maybe every hour it could be very exciting uh, if they try to do that in the Force of Motorsports. I know it's going to be a big, big uh, gigabytes of it when we add that game on there. So uh, that will conclude our show for our J Post Pep Talk show, episode number 23. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and be sure to click and subscribe to my channel on youtubecom bjpinator 3 So thanks everyone for watching, and then hopefully NXT 2.0 tonight when I watch it at the uh, College Bowl when I bowl tonight. I hope they seek a little revenge. But uh, I know that the betrayal won't happen. I think maybe Great American Bash. Let's, I don't know. <clears throat> I think maybe we'll see uh, what Indy Hartwell is, is thinking about. Because I think they, they're getting on to her too much. But if, if, it, get, if it starts to boil, then uh, we know it's going to be a betrayal. It, it's going to be a problem. But if Candice LeRae comes back, then he might team up back with her and everything else to, to bring the tag team a little bit revolutionizing. So thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you into the next one and take care.